Okay, so let's look at some examples where we're adding and subtracting fractions from each other. And uh, again, remember we can only add anything when they are the same when it comes to fractions. The denominator tells me what am I working with. So it's the denominator that I'm trying to get the same. And I do that by finding the LCM, the lowest common multiple for all the denominators. I do that by prime factorizing and they're representing each factor the most number of times it occurs and I multiply all the numerators with the missing factors and simplify and add the numerators okay so that might just have gone way over your head so let me illustrate it by actually doing it so we need to find equivalent fractions that's the whole idea I want to change this into equivalent fraction which means I can multiply the numerator and denominator with anything okay and it will be equivalent so I want to get a denominator that will satisfy both the 7 and the 5 okay so what can 7 and 5 both divide into well we break it into prime factors they already are and then each prime factor has to represent it the number of times it occurs so 7 occurs once and 5 occurs once so we have 3 over 7 and 2 over 5 now since we multiply the denominator uh, with a 5 we must also multiply the numerator with the missing 5 okay this one the 7 occurs once okay so it has to occur once there and then we multiply the numerator with the 7 as well so what do we have we've got 3 times 5 is 15 over 35 plus 14 over 30 5 that equals 29 over 35 29 is prime so if 29 can't divide into the other one then that is the simplest form we can have how about this one okay this one we have a 3 over 5 is already in prime but 4 over to prime factorize 3 is uh, 9 is 3 times 3 okay so since 5 has to be represented okay this one needs a 5 so we need to multiply 5 here and a 5 there and there should be two threes which means this one must be multiplied with two threes and then the numerator with two threes as well so and we're being we're subtracting so this time it becomes 27 that's 3 times 3 times 3 over uh, 45 minus and this one is 20 over 45 which gives me 7 over 45 again 7 is a prime number if can 7 divide into 45 no it can't so then this is uh, in its simplest form good we've now finished with well I've shown you now enough examples where we are actually adding numerical arithmetic fractions Let's now look at some examples where we have algebraic fractions, where we have unknowns like x's and y's. So here we can see when we talk about prime factorizing, we're just writing it out without the exponents. So here we have an x, 2 over x, and 3x over y, y. So we can see we need to add a y, y here and an x here. Okay, so that all of the factors are represented. It doesn't matter which order. Obviously, um, the, the order of multiplication does not matter. Okay, so here we multiply with y, y. So we multiply with y, y in the numerator. Here we multiply with x, so we multiply with x. So we now have the same denominator is x, y squared. x, y squared. What do we have in the numerator? 2y squared minus... 3x squared. Now you could, if you wanted to, go and factorize this. Um, it's not really possible because this is the difference of two squares, but two and three are not squares, so that wouldn't help. And even if you could factorize it, you would have a, a binomial and a binomial, and that would not be able to cancel with the monomial that we have in the bottom. So this would be the final answer. Okay. So let's look at this one. Hopefully this one will, will satisfy us. Here you can see 
But in the denominator, I now have a binomial, a two-termed expression, and a binomial here as well. And it's already in its, it can't be factorized anymore, so it's already the lowest, it's already an algebraic prime, if I can call it that. So I've got 3 over x plus 5, but x plus 5 itself is a factor. Okay, and then I have that negative 5 can just change this positive into negative 5 over x plus 4. Now x plus 4 again cannot be further factorized, so it represents a factor, a prime factor in itself. So I need to have the factors x plus 5 and x plus 4. This one needs the x plus 4. So I multiply the numerator and denominator with the missing factor. And this one needs the x plus 5. So numerator and denominators multiplied with x plus 5. Okay, then we go ahead and add them together. So the 3 multiplies in here. And that gives me now x plus 4 x plus 5. Now, my recommendation would be not to multiply out the denominator ever, okay? Because you might just be able to get in the numerator answer that might uh, factorize and that factor uh, factorized answer can cancel with one of these. I don't know, but it might. So we get 3x minus 5x gives me negative 2x. Then we get 12 minus 25. 12 minus 25 is negative 13. Okay, now this can't be factorized any further, which means that this is my final answer. Now, you could, if you wanted, to multiply this out in the denominator, but it, it's a good enough answer. If nothing can cancel, then it's, it's not necessary either. Okay, next question, this one. Okay, here we notice something a little bit odd. It can't be factorized. But you do notice that these two are, in fact, very similar. If, if I would just to swap this binomial, these binomial terms around, then I'd have the correct uh, expression. I'll have the same denominators. And I can do that. I can say 16 over 7x minus 8y plus now 14 over 7x minus 8y. Now, we s I said that you can do that, but you can't really because there's a negative in here. So when we do do that, the sign in front must change. So it used to be a positive. So if I put a bracket here, you see there's a positive in front here. So if I swap it around, it should change to a negative. So that when the negative multiplies back, it's negative 7x, and negative negative is positive 8. That's what I have, negative 7 and positive 8. Okay, so, so you can do that. However, remember what we said before, that this is now a positive, and it's being divided by a negative. The answer will be negative. So instead of changing the negative in front here, what we can rather do is just change whatever the sign is will change. Instead of being a positive, this will be a negative. If it was a negative, it will be a positive. Now, if in the numerator, we also swapped around, it would change again. So if the denominator and numerator changed, both would be swapped and swapping twice. Uh, if you turn, um, turn around twice, you're back in the original direction. So that's, that would have happened. But this time, we just have the denominator that changed. And now we have same denominators. Already, we didn't need to factorize anything. We can simply add. So we've got 7x minus 8y. And in the numerator, sorry, that. Okay. In the numerator, we now have 16 minus 14x. Okay, now look at this. Can we, can we simplify this? Or well, remember, we should always try and simplify our final answer. In this case, we can actually, we can take out a common factor. Common factor of 2 leaves me with, uh, sorry, this one I might have written wrong. This should be a y. It should be a y there, so excuse me. Okay, but um, so that this question works out, that should be a y. So I've got 8y minus 14. Uh, sorry, 14 becomes 7. Because I took out a 2, everything is halved. 
seven x over and now we see r oh, man now we've got the wrong way around in the bottom we wanted 8y but we can again just change this one around or the numerator doesn't matter one of the two gets changed which means the sign changes so it changes to 2 negative 2 and that negative can be either in the numerator or denominator doesn't matter or in front wherever okay 8y minus 7x and then I, I want to change the, the denominator to be 8y minus 7x and here we see beautiful this thing cancels completely so that my final answer is just 2 over 1 or simply 2 okay that's probably a better way of writing it just as 2 okay I think I've got one more example for us okay here's one more example okay so let's do this one we've got x over x plus 1 okay that's my first fraction plus and now my second fraction, if I factorize the denominator, and I'll, I'll do it quickly, I'm sure you can do it quickly by now as well, x plus 4 and x plus 1. So here I see, okay, I need an x plus 1, which I have in both, and I need an x plus 4. So this one, let's just get the 4x plus 7 here. Okay, so I need to multiply x plus 1 with x plus 4. But what I do in the denominator, I must do it in the numerator to keep it an equivalent fraction. And then I can just go about and, and simplify. So in the numerator, I'm now going to multiply this in. I've got the same denominator now, so they can be added. In the numerator, I've got x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 7. Okay, which means I've got x squared plus 8x plus 7 over, and you see I have not multiplied out this denominator. Why? Because in the end, I want to cancel common factors. So I don't want to multiply it out and then have to factorize it again. So rather, I just keep it factorized until the very end when I know nothing can cancel. And this can indeed still factorize. It factorizes into x plus 7 x plus 1 and there you can see the magic is happening x plus 1 and x plus 4 here the x plus 1 can cancel with that x plus 1 so that my final answer is x plus 7 is remaining and x plus 4 and that that I conclude uh, all of the uh, work we will be doing for fractions and I'll see you in the next topic where we get to exponents see you there